Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday. It's October the 16th, 2018, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. I have a devotional for you today, but first I would like to say the Our Father as I usually do, so please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, this is called a warning against immorality. Okay. And uh, to all those that are born again Christians and have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, uh, you would understand what it means to do immoral acts. Okay, because the Holy Spirit will convict you. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you still think that the grace is going to carry you, okay, um, it's not a free pass. Believe me, it's not a free pass. Please don't find out the hard way. I'm reading from Proverbs 5, 15 to 23, and it says, Drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Should your fountains be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets, let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth as a loving deer and a graceful doe let her breasts satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love for why should you my son be in, in enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress for the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. His own iniquities entrap the wicked man, and he is caught in the cords of his own sin. He shall die for lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. Now, what does this mean? Let's break it down, okay? First of all, it's talking about marriage here. Marriage is a very special relationship between a man and a woman. God created marriage as a gift to humanity. Godly marriages are based on love. They're based on trust and mutual respect. When these are not in place, marriages often fail. The writer of Proverbs used the word immoral in verse 20. The word literally means to turn aside. It speaks of turning aside from your wife or your husband in order to find sexual satisfaction with another. Immorality is first and foremost an act of infidelity. It is a forsaking of one's own cistern and a departure from one's own well. Unfaithfulness is the most difficult sin to forgive in a marriage relationship. It is a spear in the heart of the wounded spouse. It brings hurt that cannot easily be removed. More than that, long after the hurt dissipates, the lack of trust lingers on. Sometimes that trust is never regained. Distrust can become a cancer 
that eats away at a relationship. Second, immorality ruins your witness for the Lord. In verse 16, the fountains being dispersed abroad speak of the outflow of the marriage relationship towards others. When a marriage is healthy, it reaches out and blesses the children, the neighbors, the church, and the community. However, when a marriage is corrupted by immorality, what flows out to others is sadness, regret, and disappointment. Third, immorality robs the offender of joy. You cannot rejoice with the wife of your youth, can you, when you're living in immorality. Temporary lustful satisfaction is a poor substitute for lifetime joy. Finally, immorality brings judgment. God sees all and allows sinfulness to bring its own punishment of bondage. This world is full of men and women who have been caught in the cords of their own sin. Choose a better path. Do not allow Satan to deceive and rob you of the best things in life. Because sin is a trap, people, no matter how you look at it. You can't get away from it. You can't rationalize it. The government can't change the laws to qualify it or approve of it. I remember when um, they made um, homosexuality legal, marriage legal for homosexuals, the, the announcement from the, the White House was all lit up in the rainbow colors and the camera panned onto the audience and I saw a woman, I read her lips and she says, oh, God approves. And a lot of people think because the government okays something that it's okay with God. But you have to remember one thing, the government, what what is being run in the government and behind the government and in the body of the government, they're people that are all being used by Lucifer. Lucifer is running this world, people. And he wants to change God's laws to send you to hell. And to make, to lose your witness for God. And to lose your soul. Unfortunately, many, many people are believing that it's okay to walk away from what God put together. I hope um, this spoke to you. It's a very powerful scripture and devotional. Um, You can always come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness for what you've done and, um, you know, repent. If, if you're in this position, get on your knees, repent and ask God to guide you now in the path that he wants you to go from the point that you're at. There's always hope. I mean, you're, you're never... Uh, if you turn to God with a, with a contrite heart and repent and ask him to guide you from this point on, okay, um, that you went astray and um, to lead you now in his path and, and walk in righteousness, he'll tell you what it is that you should do. But I can tell you, it's not God's way. And on that note, I'll say have a beautiful day in the Lord. Um, I want to remind you that I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. Never forget it. He's got this huge heart. He has a love that we can't even comprehend on this earth. And he's got every day is, is, a, is a day of new mercy. So there isn't anything that you could do that you really can't make right except blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Okay. 
God is very understanding and forgiving, and we all make mistakes. But the most important thing is that you realize it's a mistake and come to him. Okay. God bless you. Have a beautiful day.